this place is situated only two and a half hours, not even two and a half hours out of Melbourne and 15 minutes east of Ararat. It's actually in between two other camping places, one being just outside of Ararat called the Green Hill Lake Campground. And I think that's a donation one. This is a free campground. And another 10 minutes east of here is the Buango State Park with oh, nearly a dozen campgrounds. And I've stayed there, I stayed at Middle Creek Campground. But that whole area is temporarily closed at the moment because it's uh, revegetating from a bushfire that went through uh, earlier this year, I think it was. So that's temporarily closed. So I came in via Warwick, or Warwick. Came in from the north that way. It was a decent road, no problems. Most of it was bitumen. And into the campground here, I think it's about five k's, it's all dirt. Minor corrugations, but nothing to give you any grief over. Again, easy with my two wheel drive. And there is four wheel drive tracks around here. Last time I was here, I didn't have any trouble getting around in my two wheel drive. Although I didn't really try the big four wheel drive tracks up to the top of the mountain. So here I am here. I've been here before, 2022, May. I was here, um, did a few hikes, and I'm gonna do a few hikes again this time. Uh, do some I didn't do before. This place, it's got a day picnic area and a campground next to that. And then it's got a little extended campground where I am. I just want a bit more peace and quiet, uh, a bit more privacy from uh, the people that were already here. And where I am here, there's an area for a caravan. There's a nice big slab over there, flat slab. A big caravan could park themselves there. There's no showers here, but there is toilets back near the day area. So if you like bushwalks, it's not a bad place to go. I'm going to do a walk I did before to the reservoir. Might do that tomorrow. I think it's going to be a little bit cooler tomorrow. Maybe some drizzle, see what happens. And then uh, Wednesday is supposed to be a cracker of a day. Pretty warm, so I'll make sure I have my shorts on and uh, go for this long hike up to the Hidden Lagoon if I can find it. Uh, and if I can manage it without uh, getting lost or getting hurt, because uh, it's pretty steep in some places. It's a nice morning, even though the sun's not out. There's a very light drizzle. It's not even really touching the ground. You can't even see the top of uh, Mount Lani Jeering because of the uh, drizzle up there. So anyway, it's gonna be uh, just a casual morning. I knew this weather was gonna happen today anyway. So after a bit of breakfast, I'm gonna go on a hike to the reservoir. And I think by that stage, maybe the, the only campus here might be gone. So I'll film the uh, campground over there a bit better and uh, Give you a look there. Anyway, time for some breakfast. Beautiful. So I'm going to do the reservoir walk and probably the water race circuit. I've done both of those before. See how it goes. Hopefully I won't get too wet. Got to take care of course. Another walk with big boulders. Love it. You'll see these historical uh, bits and pieces on the trail. Don't ask me what that is, but uh, something. So here's our first little feature. This is like a secondary dam built downstream from the main reservoir and that trickles down to form the top of that waterfall that uh, comes down into my campsite. Nice little spot isn't it? That looks nice doesn't it? So here's the top end of it. It's quite a nice little spot really isn't it? And then uh, about one and a half k's, you sort of come into this pine forest area and you can just start seeing the, the wall of the reservoir. The reservoir was built back in 1880 from granite, obviously being fuller at other times. And from here, you can do the water race walk. Not sure how dry that summit's gonna be. So it sort of goes around the reservoir and up to a little summit. 
Oh, here we go. Here's the first part of the historic water race. This is a little bit steeper section, but still nothing to worry about. What's the matter, cockatoo? He's angry. I mean, that was a cockatoo, but the ones that are making all the noise now are Corellas. And they're upset about something. Got to find my way. <laughs> Just turned the wrong way. Ah, oh, shut up, you confused me. So, a pretty easy path back. Those noisy Corellas have gone to annoy someone else, maybe. Mount Lani Jeering, not Langi Garan or Girin or anything like that. That's a 10 kilometer return trip, that Easter Creek Trail. I don't think I want to do that today. Uh, the track that I came down, I didn't film much of it, but uh, there's a guy recently testing out his new four wheel drive up the road and I'll link his uh, video to the, here if you want to see what the track's like. So after six kilometers, I'm back to the campground. There's no real reception here, not with Optus anyway. I'm barely getting the signal. Not a lot of spots just here, but uh, you can fit a few tents here and there. Fire pit there, another fire pit over there. Uh, what is it, two? Two per toilet. You're in off of the blokes. Not too bad. Yeah, so the picnic area here, a few benches, barbecue pit. Another one over there. One of the best things you can do is actually just change your shoes, your footwear. That's what I'm talking about. So we're just going to go down the uh, Lani Jeering track to the rock art. It's a little walk. So I'll have a look at that. Plus I'll check out whether it's good enough to take the trailer because I can go that way home. So it was definitely two wheel drivable, but that road has deteriorated a fair bit in the last two years since I was here. I won't be pulling my trailer that way. I could, but you'd have to take it pretty slow. Just a bit further on uh, is the Western Highway. So it's probably easier to go come out the way I came into the campground initially and go along the highway and just come in this way to come to this art site and probably to the Hidden Lagoon car park, which is just a bit further down the road, not very far. Wow. I didn't see that sign at the other end. Here we are, Lani Jeering. It's not very far. Let's have a look at some Aboriginal rock art. I've been here before. I just wanted to show you. It's not a bad day now. There's no drizzle. It's a cloud cover and I like that. If you're a very light sleeper, the highway noise, even though it's like five k's away from the campground, you can hear it, the trucks. If you're like me, you might like to bring your earplugs to get a bit more quiet asleep. It's not horrible, but it's just there, you know what I mean? And here we are. How do you like this rock formation? Oh, remember what happened, we were at Green Lake and I lifted one of these lids. There's a dead spider. Pretty worn out. Can't really make out much of what it is, but that's it. If you're interested in that sort of thing, come and have a look. It's a nice little walk and the surroundings are beautiful and you might see a wallaby like I did. So that's not meant for four wheel drive on that road. But there's no sign at the other end that said uh, four wheel drive only. So keep heading south and we'll end up on the western highway here. So you've got the day visit area just there which you can see it's all sectioned off with bollards. And there's uh, picnic tables and such, barbecues. And if you keep following that road around there, it just goes around the bollards to go into the campground itself. Reasonably flat here, reasonably flat. Uh, someone's left fire going, which is a stupid thing to do. So I better put that out.
So this is the uh, road that currently they reckon you should only use a four-wheel drive. So I ended up going all that way to this car park and then walking to the rock art. And you can see it's only a little bit to the highway. And this distance here is only not that much shorter from here and back to the campground. And that way is definitely a lot faster than that way. So tomorrow, perhaps I'll just go out of the campground and then park there, even though that little section there they say is for four wheel drives. Having done today and knowing there's not going to be any rain overnight, I'm quite happy to park there and then try to do this walk, which apparently is two and a half to three hours return. Fairly tricky in places at least. And the, I'm not even sure if that lagoon's got water in it. Hard and very steep in places. Bit of a workout. Two hour return, they reckon. I'll just take it nice and easy and take three hours if I want. People have been coming here for thousands of years. The Jabwarung language for home of the black cockatoo. So there you have it. Lani Jeering, 15 minutes east of Ararat. Between Ararat and Beaufort, if you like a few more people around, go to that Green Hill campground over near Ararat, around the lake. So tonight, got the rice going on. Some salmon, some Greek salad. Good morning, day three. What a glorious morning. It was a bit windy through the night and so when I went to bed the fire was still cracking a bit and so I actually made use of a piece of iron that I found just to make sure that the embers wouldn't uh, fly out and uh, go somewhere where they shouldn't. So this, this is at the other end. Nothing to say it's four wheel drive only. Anyway, I'm going to go via the highway because it's quicker. Okay, made it in all right. No worries at all for two wheel drive coming in through the south end. We're going to do this uh, Hidden Lagoon walk. Got my walking sticks with me just in case. We're not going to rush it, we'll just take it easy. Got to be careful. Starts off easy enough. But let's not be deceived. And here we go. Starting to climb. Tell you what, if, you, if you've never tried walking sticks, it's, uh, it's not a wuss out. I used them because they actually stabilize you a lot when you're trying to negotiate some tricky climbs, even descents. They just balance you out. So I'm fairly fit, but I tell you, they stop you from slipping and stuff, and that's got nothing to do with being fit. I find sometimes the steep descents are a bit more trickier than the steep climbs. Anyway, so I just got this flat bit now, so having a little bit of a rest, recuperating. You can have a little picnic there. Lovely. 1.5 kilometers to the Hidden Lagoon. I've been asked before if, uh, if I get a bit scared camping on my own. Uh, short answer is no. You can let your imagination get away from you. You can start thinking all sorts of things. But to be honest, look, Australian bushland, especially in Victoria, we don't have that, that many animals that'll really hurt you. There are kangaroos that can hurt you, but you know, you stay out of their way if you can. Wombats, wallabies, they're not going to really worry you. Snakes, yeah, if you make enough noise, they'll hear you coming. Again, cool months of the year, snakes aren't that much of a problem. Spiders, you've got to sort of go out of your way to find a spider. The most annoying thing, I think, when the Weather starts to warm up, you'll get the flies and mosquitoes. I carry a face net if they get too bad. As far as um, being scared of other people and stuff, it comes down to your personal way of thinking about things. So when you're stepping over logs and stuff, just be careful what's on the other side. You want to step over and then step onto a snake. You don't want to do that. So try to be mindful where you're walking. 
but generally we're still lucky in this country it's not as crazy as some other countries you can still go camping and most people that you'll see or encounter will be good people that are enjoying nature too when night time comes you can let your imagination run away you hear all sorts of sounds you think oh what's that what's that they're just kangaroos wallabies possums wombats things like that that are trying to just eat they come out at night because they feel safer so if you're out there you're going to scare them a bit if you're by yourself you might spook them and you might you know they they might attack you pretty unlikely most likely going to run away but yeah they don't want you there really big lizards you rarely see lizards that size anymore i mean there are around big goannas and stuff if they get scared they might want to run up you because they think you're a tree and they got claws so you got to be careful of them but usually they'll try to run away most creatures and rightly so are scared more of you than you are of them and if you make a little bit of noise while you're walking you'll scare them away so it just depends if you want to see them or not tread quietly you might see them sometimes birds will hear you coming a lot earlier than other animals so they make signals to other birds but i would say that the animals know some of their calls too so they run away that's fairly recent Go around somehow. They're quite the warning signal, aren't they, to other animals? A little rocky outcrop. It's like those two stones there are a gateway. And if it wasn't for that tree, yeah, like you come through those two rocks and then sit around here like a meeting place. Was there any water in the lagoon? No, it's not Ah, oh, damn it. I know, we've come so many times we get to see it fall. I tried to find some uh, blogs and stuff about it and someone come up in August and they said uh, there was no water there. I was hoping some water had come back by then. Yeah. You need a good bit of rain, I've heard, like for a long time. Yeah. yeah. Still worth it? Yeah, oh, it's, it's beautiful gorgeous. though. Yeah. Yeah, we just sat in the sun for like <laughs> half an hour. That's what I'm going to do. That's well, what that's I'm going to do. That's the plan. You have it all to yourself now. Oh, that's all right. Uh, so here's the hidden lagoon. Yep. You can actually go straight up the gully. It's pretty, like it's it's pretty steep, and there's not a real trail. Um, but people do go up there, and that'll take you to the summit um, of Lani Jiri. And then you can either come down back down that way, or if you're really keen, you could do a crazy circuit all the way back to the car park. Mm. If you're a fast walker and you've got the rest of the day. Oh, there were a couple of nice people. Told me about some plants and stuff that they saw different hiking areas they do good on them lagoon's got no water in it ah! and seeing those two girls hiking around like that they've done some k's today they do a bit of bush walk and they come up here fairly regularly apparently but it just goes to show you they feel quite confident and safe walking around so there you go hidden lagoon this way to the right the hidden lagoon oh, i wish i had water in it it's not real deep so you can see how it dry up fairly quickly in warmer weather and if there isn't any rain. Three point two six kilometers and I dawdled for one hour and twenty minutes nearly. It's a nice spot all the same. I'm gonna stop here and uh, have a bit of a refresh. It's still totally worth coming up here. Still got my balance. Now the wattles stand out. Bit of colour. So there's my interpretation of Deadpool hiking. Thought I'd stop here for a moment catch my breath well it's not too bad going down with walking sticks it's excellent from here in the distance you can see that's the Grampians over there the mountains and Ararat is straight over there I might go for a little drive towards Ararat oh you can just make out the lake where the caravan park is so I'm gonna go have a look at that just to give you a bit of a look what it's like at the moment during school holidays but what a magnificent view So two hours 25 with a bit of dawdling going on. 6.6 .6 Ks. 
Let's slip into some comfortable footwear and go have a look at uh, Green Hill Caravan Park over near Ararat. Well, we're at Green Hill Lake. So here's pretty much where the entry is. You can see it's a fairly big lake. And the caravan park sections are on that side over there. Camping permits apply for stays greater than five days or nights. Oh, that's the boat ramp there. I actually thought it was going to be a lot more busier. section. I don't know why. Closest to the entry. So that's Green Hill Lake. What do you think of that? Looks sort of pleasant enough anyway. No, especially around the other side would be pretty good I reckon. Picnic area and boat ramp. Looks like a popular place anyway. Time to go back to the campground. Oh, that's a shame. Someone's uh, run over a, oh, probably a four foot brown snake. So there you go, they're out there. He's a nice looking one. You're a beauty, aren't you? Make sure you don't get run over. There's a shame about that snake, really. I mean, it was in plain view. I don't know how people accidentally run them over. Just not paying attention, I guess. Which is a shame. You gotta make sure you drive to the conditions, keep your speed down. It was right in the middle of the road, so it's hard to know how they hit it really. But anyway, it'll be food for something. I saw that lizard a fair way off. I guess I'll keep a lookout more for those sort of things. I just had a bit of a walk around just before and already saw more lizards. Big ones, about that big. Time for a little drink. Cheers. It's incredibly quiet. I don't know, can't remember the last time I've heard such a quiet night. It's incredible. I wonder if I've lost my hearing. <laughs> Good night. Eventually about four o'clock in the morning I heard a couple of kangaroos and an angry possum. Actually at one stage a car came out. It's about nine o'clock at night, something like that. It came right in into this area and I had a feeling it might have been possibly the police just doing a patrol because when I stayed at Middle Creek over at Bwangor State Park they did come through there and uh, patrol which was good to see really but at the same time it makes you wonder why do they need to so has there been issues in the past so time to finish breakfast pack up and get the hell out of here I'll see you next time thanks for watching
That was a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. This western highway, it's a f***ing busy road. Just be careful trying to get out. 